continue to affect the industry? What trends do you want to see emerging, perhaps you know, becoming the new norms? Uh, cargo, I think, is going to continue to play a very strong role for the industry. When I reflect back on early 2020, after the pandemic was declared, and uh, we had the Antonov fly into Toronto Pearson, the world's largest uh, air cargo aircraft, uh, the streets towards the airport were lined with cars. Uh, people were gathered on the ramp, very socially distanced, to welcome this cargo aircraft full of PPE. Uh, it was a very significant moment, and it reflects why this industry is so important and why the cargo elements of the industry are so important. We know that the majority of, uh, of uh, aircraft, air airline revenues uh, in 2020 and even in 21 uh, came more substantially from cargo than ever before. Uh, and I think that there's a, a great opportunity. Uh, as we're seeing with the supply chain problems that plague us today, uh, air cargo is absolutely playing a role uh, in bringing supplies and inventory where it's needed. Uh, so this is a, a big moment for those cargo specialists that have become the heroes of their organizations uh, to not only uh, work on today's problems, but to start to modernize cargo, move us from a lot of paper processes that continue to, to, to be the, uh, the, the means of operating cargo to a more digitalized, seamless, quick, efficient uh, movement of goods and trade. Uh, you know, speaking from personal experience, I'm sure you've experienced this as well, you know, traveling here to Cancun, um, there's many barriers in the way um, of international travel. What is your opinion on, you know, this, these barriers and the global travel regulations? So it used to be that uh, you needed to have a judge, a police officer, and a doctor in your social circle in case you ever needed help. Now I think society says we need to know an airport CEO uh, because I get so many calls from, from peers and friends about what do I need to do to travel to Germany? You know, what's the process for me to travel to Mexico? Can I go to this country? Uh, and, and it really reflects that we've got to change that. Uh, we've got to make travel more harmonized. We've got to communicate with potential passengers in a way that gives them more certainty about what their travel experience is going to be. And I think we're going to get there. You know, there's keen focus uh, with airlines, with airports, with government agencies to be able to improve the travel process. And we're very keenly focused on that. And it's going to be necessary uh, to restore uh, passenger confidence. We recognize today that just even the airport travel experience alone if we were to have 2019 levels, it would go from generally one and a half hours inside the airport to eight hours inside the airport if we were at 2019 levels. That is obviously uh, not, that is a false choice, that can't happen. Uh, so improvement of flows and harmonization of the processes, digitalizing all of the health requirements that have been added into travel um, are front and center in terms of our objectives in the year ahead. The recent COP26 summit has put a renewed focus on climate change. Um, can you talk about any recent developments such as ETAA? Um, for example, I know you've signed on to the World Economic Forum for Clean Skies Initiative, um, so perhaps you can talk a little bit. Yeah, we're, we're really pleased to see the industry as a whole moving towards being more green and sustainable. Uh, at the GTAA at Pearson Airport, it has been uh, one of our core values for a long time. Uh, many years ago, we set out to reduce our carbon footprint, uh, and we have actually improved by 60% uh, our footprint since 2006. And of course, we are striving for, for net zero greenhouse gas by 2050. Um, and, and so, you know, whether it's signing on to the Clean Skies Initiative, which is about 10% commitment to sustainable aviation fuels by 2030, that is a very significant ambition, but is one that not just a, that, that Pearson needs to undertake, but the entire industry as a collective. Um, this is the expectation of the public. This is the expectation of who we are, of stewards of the environment for many of our airports. Uh, we certainly believe ourselves to be stewards of the environment and of connecting people, places, and culture in a way that that is great for the earth, great for the economy, and great for people. And so this will remain a very keen focus and exciting uh, focus for, for us at Pearson as well.
apart from sustainability, what other items are on your agenda for the next couple of years? Um, do you have any exciting developments? Yes, when I joined Pearson, uh, and it was it was a month before the pandemic struck, uh, you know, I joined because I saw a very big capability uh, in terms of where P Pearson stood in the market with its competitors. Uh, we are this we were the second largest international gateway into all of North America. Uh, during the pandemic, 60% of all border crossings, including land and by air, came through Pearson. Uh, so, uh, you know, I know very much how important Pearson is, not just to the country of Canada, but to many other countries around the world uh, for, for access into North America. So I am very excited about the next evolutionary step in our capital program, one that is transformative, one that contemplates digitalization and making the passenger experience one that is not just great amongst airports, that competes with experiences that people have in their general lives outside of airports. One that is greener, one that contemplates ESG, the social factors. We love to create big jobs and lots of jobs at the airports, and we need those to be great jobs as well. So whether it's from the capital side, from our people transformation, uh, there is a lot of exciting development that's going to be coming uh, through Toronto Pearson and to Toronto Pearson. Uh, they talked about a lot of lessons learned from this pandemic, but are there any that are particular to you and to Toronto Pearson? You know, I, at the end of the day, our business is all about people, and we think about it quite literally in terms of connecting people. You know, I saw a stat that 100 million more people, 100 million people, live in a place different than where they did 10 years ago. So the the essence of man to connect, um, to travel, uh, and to to immigrate around the world, I think, is going to remain something that's very key. And so when we think about the heart of our business with people, not only is it our passengers. It really is also about our employees. So I would say some of the lessons learned is just remember that as leaders in the airport sector, you know, how, how are we engaging with people? How are we promoting their wellness? Not just their physical wellness, but their mental wellness as well. And uh, you know, that is something that really emerged in this crisis as we see continued anxiety you know, inside and even outside of airports. I do believe it's a collective responsibility for us to really just focus on the human, uh, uh, the humanity in all of our businesses, including the aviation sector. And I mean, are you positive for the future? How do you see the recovery? I am charged up for the future. And, and look, and not because I think it's going to be all sunshine and roses. I do think that we have some formidable challenges uh, to face in the sector, across society as well. Uh, but I believe in the power of people to create great things. I believe in this industry. We have navigated so many crises before. Our values are the right ones in terms of the mission that we serve. Uh, to serve serve our countries, to serve our communities, to serve our people, uh, and that gives me a tremendous amount of optimism. Deborah, thank you so much for answering my questions. You're welcome. <laughs>